this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a basic photo montage in Premiere Pro 2.0. You can see that I have a folder in my project panel called Photos, and I've already imported three JPEG images into that folder. I'm just going to left hand mouse click to select the first one, and then press the Shift key down and hold it down, and then left hand mouse click to select the last one and select all of my images. Now I'm going to click on this Automate to Sequence button at the bottom of my project panel. This opens up the Automate to Sequence dialog box and I'm just going to go right ahead and click OK. So you can see a little mini photo montage of these three photos has been created and if I just hit the space bar it'll start playing through and notice that we've got this little dissolve from one photograph to the next. So now that we know how to create a simple photo montage, let's look at setting up some of our options and preferences so that the montage is created exactly as we want it. I've gone ahead and deleted the Photos folder from my project panel, and now I'm going to go up and left hand mouse click on Edit, and then go right down to Preferences and left hand mouse click on General. This opens up the General Preferences dialog box, and there's only a couple of settings here that we really need to concern ourselves with. The first is Still Image Default Duration, which I have set to 90 frames. This is how long each photograph will appear in your montage in your timeline. So I've got it set to 90 frames, which is the same for me as 3 seconds because I'm working at 30 frames per second. The second setting that we want to be concerned with is this default scale to frame size. I have the box checked, so it will. What this means is that Premiere Pro will scale the photograph so that it appears in its entirety. You'll see the whole photograph in your program monitor window. I'm going to hit OK. Those preferences are set. Now I'm going to go and import a new file into my project. So I'm going to click on File, left hand mouse click, and then Import. The keyboard shortcut is Control i and I'm just going to navigate to a folder called My Photos. And instead of hitting Open, I'm going to click Import Folder. And this imports the folder and all of its contents into my project panel. If I expand the folder, you can see inside I have 10 different JPEG files. And notice I'm using this numbering convention where I always make sure there's at least one zero in front of my largest number. My largest number being 10 because I have 10 photographs. What this does is ensures that the numbering order from 1 through 10 will be maintained by Premiere Pro when I bring these photographs into my project. I'm now just going to go ahead and select the first photograph just like I did before and then press shift and select the last one so all of the images are selected. Click the Automate to Sequence button and let's take a look at some of the options that we have here. So the ordering option is just simply the order in which your photographs will appear in your timeline sequence. So the selection order means the order that you selected them in your project panel and sort order means the order that they were sorted in your project panel. In this case they're one and the same. The selection order and sort order are exactly the same thing so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, placement there's no other option than sequentially right now, so we won't worry about that. Method is just the way that the photo sequence will be placed in your timeline. And Overlay Edit will overlay over top of any existing material, therefore deleting it. And Insert Edit will push that material to either side, uh, and that way it will be preserved. Now, in this case, again, it doesn't make any difference because we don't have any pre-existing material in our timeline sequence. Clip overlap is very important. This is what sets your transition between one photograph to the other. So I've got it set to 20 frames in this case. And then we have the checkbox for apply default video transition. So if you want to have that transition from one photo to the next, you want to have this box checked. OK, I'm going to hit OK. So notice a couple of things. Obviously, we've got a photo montage created now with the 10 images. But also, I had my current time indicator deliberately moved away from the beginning of my sequence just to show you that wherever you have your current time indicator placed when you hit that OK button in the Automate to Sequence dialog box, that is the time where your photo montage will start. So in this case, I had my current time indicator at 2 seconds and 6 frames. That's why the montage is starting with a little gap in front. I can just use my track tool key to drag everything back to the beginning if I want and now just hit play and it'll play through this little montage.
So you might be wondering, well, how do you go about setting the default video transition? That's a good question, and it's very easy to do. I've got all of my transitions stored in a folder called Favorite Transitions, and I can now choose, let's say, Dip to Black. I'll just right-hand mouse click on it, and then select this option of Set Selected as Default Transition. So now, the next time I create a uh, photo montage using the automate to sequence button dip to black will be used instead of cross dissolve so let's just test that theory I'll delete this we'll go to the beginning notice that all of my photos are still selected in my project panel so I'll just hit the automate to sequence button again hit OK and now we should have dips to black instead of dissolves and indeed we do Alright, so that covers the basics of creating a simple photo montage in Premiere Pro 2.0. I will be doing an advanced tutorial on photo montages, but in the meantime, I hope you found this tutorial useful.